Welcome back folks, we have the X5SA back on the bench today. Now in a previous video I upgraded the X axis from V-slot wheels to a linear rail. Today I'm going to do the same for the Y axis. And when we're done, we'll have eliminated all of the V-slot wheels from the X5SA. Now that means an entirely new XY gantry, that's new motor mounts, new X carriages, everything. Now, the non-pro X5SA, along with almost all low to mid-range 3D printers, uh, utilize these V-slot wheels for some or all of their X and Y movement. Now, they're ubiquitous because they're, they're very cheap, uh, they're easy to design around, uh, they're pretty easy to tune. They work by supporting the wheel shafts in a metal plate uh, such that these rubber wheels align with the, the slots in a 2020 extrusion. Now, one side of the wheels will, will just be secured directly to the plate, while the other side will go through what's called an eccentric nut. Uh, it's a nut with an offset hole, so that when you twist the nut, the shaft moves closer or farther away from the 2020 extrusion. So just by twisting this eccentric nut, you can increase or decrease the pressure of the wheel on the extrusion. And you know you have the right amount of pressure when all wheels of the carriage spin when the carriage moves in either direction. And, and the system is, is all right. Uh, when everything is tuned correctly, you can get pretty precise motion. Now, these wheels do have some downsides. Uh, first, they require a bit of ongoing maintenance. Uh, these carriages are subject to a lot of vibration. Uh, there's a lot of pressure continuously on them. Uh, and it's not unheard of for the eccentric nuts to slip out of adjustment a little bit. In addition, the wheels themselves have to be somewhat soft to smoothly glide along the extrusion, which makes wear an issue. My X5SA wheels are already showing visible signs of wear and they're not even a year old. This wheel here is already cracked. Now you have to keep an eye on the carriages and make it a point to keep them in tune. The second big issue is that while aluminum is you know, more rigid than wood or plastic or, or acrylic, uh, it's not exactly known for being a super durable metal. If you bump your rail into a wall or if you over torque a nut, uh, you could damage the slot or, or worse yet, something could accidentally fall and get kind of wedged in there, throwing the wheels off. So what's the solution? Mid-range to higher end printers often use linear rails, in particular the MGN 12H rail and carriage. Now these are hardened steel rails with a bearing filled carriage that slides along these little grooves. And since there are dozens of little steel bearings rolling around this carriage, there's a bunch of surface area, meaning very little wobble and very little wear. Now the downside is these rails are about $30 a pop for the generic no-name brands and quite a bit more if you want an actual name brand Highwind rail. Back to the X5SA. At the start of this video, I showed the completed installation printing using, using a Bowden carriage. However, I prefer direct drive. So I'm gonna tear everything down, rebuild it as a direct drive. However, you have the option of building either. Unfortunately, I no longer have the included hot end and leveling sensor that came with the X5SA. So everything you see here is based on the E3D V6 and a BL touch. That might be some added expense if you're coming from a completely stock X5SA. So the first thing we're gonna do is install the actual MGN 12 inch rails. You're going to need three 450 millimeter MGN 12 inch linear rails. Uh, you can get away with a 500 on the X axis, but if you're, if you're buying them all, just buy three 450s. And in all cases, whether you're talking about the X axis, which is this one here, or the Y axis, you want the rail to line up into the center of the extrusion. So this one, uh, this is actually a 500 millimeter rail, so it may look a little longer than what you have, but as long as it's aligned to the center, you're great. Up on top, as long as you're aligned to the center, you're great, and that's about 60 millimeters from the front of the printer to the start of the rail or on the backside. You can use a 3D printed centering block to ensure that your rails are directly aligned with the slot in the extrusion, and I'd also recommend taping down or otherwise securing the carriage, because if that thing slides off the end of the rail, all the BBs are gonna dump out and it's gonna be a real mess. I've stripped off uh, enough of the, the, the gantry of the X5SA uh, to illustrate how it all goes together. So now we're gonna start sticking all these pieces uh, where they belong, starting with the motor mounts. Now, the motor mounts have uh, one grooved side that's to accommodate the groove in the NEMA 17 stepper. So that stepper is going to go face down. Uh, and the way this is gonna sit on the, uh, on the frame is that this arrow is going to point towards the front. So when you're mounting the motor, feed out your wires in the direction that you want them to go. So I personally like mine to go towards the rear 
inside of the printer. So I'm gonna mount my motor like this uh, and notice that two of the holes uh, are deeper than the others. So use a slightly longer screw for the, uh, the, the deeper one or for the, the shallower ones. And then note that um, the cables on the, uh, uh, this modified gantry, I tried to make it so that they were included in the profile of the 2020 extrusion. So the top uh, Core XY cable should be lower than the top, lift, top lip of the 2020 extrusion. The bottom of the bottom cable should be above the bottom lip of the 2020 extrusion. So if you do mount something above or below, in theory, those cables won't, won't touch it. So, but that does mean that you're probably going to have to adjust the height of these uh, timing pulleys uh, just a little bit, because uh, they are going to be slightly shallower or deeper than what's on the default uh, uh, trunk seat. Um, you should probably do this after you get the belts in place and just make sure everything is, is parallel, uh, but keep in mind, you're gonna have to make those adjustments as well. All right, so next we're going to work on the pulley blocks. Uh, these sit at the front left and front right of the printer uh, and feed the cabling back to the motor and over to the other side. The aligned slots uh, go along the x-axis. The uh, offset slots go down the y-axis. Uh, and it sits here, and, and the nuts are on top here because we are actually mounting this upside down. This is designed for a generic 2020 frame. Uh, we're trying to use it on the Tronxy, but with this 2040, uh, um, you know, larger extrusion uh, on the side here, uh, we can't mount it uh, the, the way you'd think, uh, the way you'd expect it to be mounted. Uh, if they had moved this 2020 extrusion to the front of the 2040, that would have been okay. But the way it sits now, we have to go upside down. Uh, and mounting it's pretty easy. Uh, you'll see that there's kind of these offset notches by the mounting holes, and that's to accommodate these uh, 2040 brackets, these 2040 corner brackets. Uh, so you can put a corner bracket here, and then when you mount it, uh, you'll get extra stability on that, uh, that x-axis. Uh, I highly recommend doing this if you have the brackets. And if you don't, it's just you know M4 bolts and, and bolt nuts through there. So. All right, now that we have our bolts and boat nuts in, uh, note that you can't put this fourth boat nut in due to the, uh, the, the downward bolt in the frame. Uh, so you're gonna have to stick with just these three. Uh, but you can take one of your GT2 pulleys and slide it right into the slot. And note that these are aftermarket GT2 pulleys. Uh, the ones that came with the Tronxy are thicker. They're, they're kind of a wider pulley, so they wouldn't even fit in these holes. Uh, they're also plasticky. I actually broke one of them uh, and the others are, are showing significant signs of wear. So these are aftermarket. You'll have to buy them, but consider it an upgrade. Uh, so you pop the one in the hole, pop the other one where it, it's supposed to go, uh, align all of the boat nuts, and you should be able to slide this right on top. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to lower The, uh, uh, the pulley block, so it, it not so, so it's locked in all the way, but so it still has a little bit of room for adjustment because the next thing I'm going to do is install these 30 millimeter M3 bolts. And these come from the bottom and align with these M3 nuts and that holds the block all together and perfectly aligned. So you're not relying on the correct alignment of the boat nuts. Uh, you're guaranteed that it's all going to be aligned because the uh, the bolts are aligned. And you can tighten these as much as you want since they are plastic on plastic and they're holding everything together. So it's 
not only a, a, not a bad idea, but it's also advisable to tighten those guys down pretty good. And then now we can tighten down the boat nuts. And our pulley block is now super duper stable. The last thing to do is to install the M5 bolts that are used as axes for the pulleys. Uh, if you have M5 nuts, uh, we're going to insert them. Oops. Uh, if you have M5 nuts, we're going to insert them from the bottom uh, so that they uh, tie into the nut. Uh, if you don't have nuts, you can just drop them in at the top uh, and then just leave them be. Uh, when you do screw these guys in from the bottom, you want them to, the, the heads to just barely make contact with the plastic. You want basically no pressure uh, on the plastic itself because there are printed little spacers keeping those bearings in place. And if you tighten these down too much, they very well could crush those spacers. All right, and that's our pulley block. Prepping the bearings in the Y carriage may be the most complicated part of this installation and it's still not very bad. We'll, we'll get through it together. What you wanna do is take your, your Y carriage and a 30 millimeter or larger M5 bolt and then feed it through, again, this is the, the orientation. Uh, so feed it through what would be the top. Just a few millimeters. And then take one of the um, pulleys and then stick it on, on that shaft. And then you know, make sure it's pressed all the way down. And then feed the bolt through until you can just barely see it popping up from the pulley. Like so. And then put the washer on top. And then feed the bolt through again until it's almost perfectly aligned with the top of the washer. And then you should be able to slide in the last pulley. And then you can see from the top, oops, when it's aligned with the hole. And then it's just a matter of feeding the bolt through the rest of the way. And again, if you have a five millimeter nut, you can go ahead and put it in there. And then you only, as with the uh, pulley blocks, you only want to tighten this enough that it touches the plastic. The, both these bearings should be able to move very, very freely uh, inside, of, uh, inside of this carriage. And then when we're done here, we can just install it onto the MGN 12H rails. Okay, and assuming you've done both sides, you can now insert the X-axis extrusion. Uh, this drops into both sides, and it can be a bit of a tight fit, but that's okay, that's what we want. And you wanna get it fairly even. And then use M5 bolts and boat nuts to secure it to the carriages. I recommend using at least three, um, two on one side, one on the other, uh, just to keep, you know, to prevent any additional twisting action it might have. Um, but um, besides that, you should be, should be good to go for your X and Y axes.
Now that the gantry is all installed, we can work on the X carriage. Uh, and to start off, we're going to go through all of these uh, nut captures. There's a lot of them. There's eight just for the cable clamps alone. All right, eight cable clamp nuts are installed. Now there's two, these hold on, the, the carriage hangs like this, these hold together the bottom plate. And then there's two more here uh, that hold on the cable tower, uh, which is currently attached to the printers. I don't have that here, but it's a tower that sticks up so you can attach your cable chain. So all of the nuts are installed. Oops. All of the nuts are installed. I'm going to put the cable clamps on here just for safekeeping. That'll also pull the nuts deeper into the, the cavity to make sure they're, they're fully set. Okay, so next, um, this is the, uh, the end stop that came with the Chunk Z X5SA. Uh, there's a number of hole patterns, or I guess two hole patterns here, depending on whether you're using this end stop or the more common like one inch square PCB, and I think it'll even take the long end stop, but um, Either way, uh, you can use the, the, the built-in Tronxy or the default Tronxy one or um, uh, a generic aftermarket one as well. To use the Tronxy one, you're going to use the same mounting screws that it came with. So these little tiny like M2s or whatever they are. Uh, it also came with standoffs that I immediately lost. Uh, if you don't have the standoffs, you can take a little you know few millimeter section of PTFE and just snip that off and that works as a perfect little standoff for the end stop and then feed it in like so. And mind its orientation, uh, so the, 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 the carriage is actually going to hang like this with the motor, you know, the, the, the spindle of the motor coming out this way uh, and this uh, end stop is going to be kind of on the, the, the back side of the, of the carriage. and stop is mounted. Now that we have all of our nuts pushed in to our carriage, we have the cable clamps attached, we have the end stop attached, we're ready to attach the carriage to the MGN12H rail. Now keep in mind that this flat face, um, the motor is going to mount like so and come out through the front face. So this face is towards the front of the printer. So with the X carriage attached now, we can work on the bottom panel. And you can attach this right now and, and you know do all the work while it's attached to the X carriage, but it's kind of easier to do it uh, while it's still separate. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is assemble the fan assembly. There are two uh, pressed in nuts in the blower and then two pressed in nuts in the fan plate. And these two just go together with a couple of short little screws. All 
All right, and then the blower assembly can now attach to, actually let's put the fan on. We'll put the blower fan on first. Now we can attach the blower assembly to the, uh, to the bottom plate. Okay, so with the fan assembly attached, uh, we can now work on the BL touch. Uh, there's this, this kind of washer that, that moves the BL touch down a bit to accommodate for the volcano hot end that I'll be putting it on there. If you're using a standard hot end, you don't need the washer. Uh, and these oblong holes are because my official BL touch and my clone BL touch have slightly different hole mounting patterns. Uh, and the oblong holes account for for both patterns. I also prefer to use uh, nylon nuts on the BL touch to give it a little extra holding power since it is going to be, you know, touching the bed and, and, and you know, a bit more motion on it than, than other pieces. Uh, problem is they're, they're harder to attach. They're a little, little more finicky, but I think it's worth it for the peace of mind on the BL touch. All right, messy, but we got it on there. The final thing you can attach is one of these ADXL 345 accelerometers uh, if you wanted to do automated resonance checking. Um, and these guys, uh, by default, it looks like it mounts this way, uh, and that's fine except for just given the, the shape of the carriage, it can be difficult to plug stuff into these pins. So I actually prefer to mount it upside down. Uh, and now there are solder joints on the bottom of this board. So there's this little washer that you can print to kind of hold it off just a little bit. Uh, there's your completed bottom plate uh, with the BL touch and the accelerometer and the fan all mounted, ready to be attached to the X carriage. If you're using a uh, BMG like I am, uh, then you can insert the motor and use the top right screw as kind of a set screw. And that'll hold the motor in place while we then put in the bottom bracket. So now we can install the cable tower, which is pretty simple. Just line up the holes and go. Uh, there's a number of different cable towers. Um, there's a blank one that you know just supports cable ties. Then there's uh, there's this one that's kind of made for uh, Ethernet cables, uh, and there's some that support cable chains, some that don't. So you have a, a handful of options for towers. And then with the cable tower on now, all we have to do is install our extruder and hook up the electronics. All right. Now with everything hooked up, the next part is running the GT2 cables. So one of the things I love about this design is how easy it is to run the cables, because with Core XY, it can get a bit confusing. Here, it's pretty easy. So you're gonna start with one of your cables. You know, obviously it's gonna wrap the teeth around the, uh, the two, the GT2 pulley on the motor. And then you'll know just by the position of the cable uh, wrapped around the motor, exactly where it feeds into the Y carriage. And the great thing is that there's only one hole that it can feed through. So there's no ambiguity exactly where it should feed and what pull it should go around. 
And as long as you feed it in level and, and, and even with the pulley, it's gonna come out the other end real simply. There, there, there's not a lot of finagling. Uh, there's not a challenge to keep it on the pulley. And the same can be said for this pulley block. Uh, as long as you keep the, the, the cable all in one direction, you feed it through the one hole that it can go through, it'll automatically come out the other side. Uh, no ambiguity as to exactly how it's supposed to run. When you, when you got your cables all ran and they're all kind of pulled through, um, you know, first to make sure that they're not, you know, that they're still on the motor spindles uh, and that they're not hung up on anything. Uh, and then you're, we're ready to kind of proceed to the, the tensioning step, which uh, is probably the trickiest part of a core XY system. Uh, but we're going to make it easy. Uh, we're going to start with the back of the, uh, of the carriage. And we're going to take off, or I guess loosen, the rear cable clamps. So with them loosened and uh, the, the, the holes exposed, uh, you can take the rear cabling and run it through the hole and then pull it so that it is roughly aligned with the front of the carriage plastic because uh, you don't want a bunch of extra cable hanging off the front. We're going to leave all the extra hanging off the rear. Uh, and with that kind of in the right position, we're just going to align it with the track. And then tighten down the clamp. And that one's not going anywhere. We'll do the same on the other side. Half the work is done. Now we're going to switch to the front. And then we're going to feed the cable through. And now here, the tighter you pull, it's going to pull on the other side of the carriage. So here's where we're actually going to be setting tension. So get the cable clamp kind of installed and ready to tighten down. So most, you know, mostly screwed down. And then you're gonna to wanna to pull on this cable um, roughly about as hard as you would pull, you know, a rubber band to stretch it three or four inches. So, so you don't want a ton of pressure on here. You can over tighten these things that, you know, could cause binding and, and you know, it, it's not, you're not doing yourself a favor by getting these things too tight. Um, but you do want a good bit of pressure uh, uh, you know, to keep them very taut. And then as you're holding it with the right amount of pressure, just tighten down the clamps. All right, one side's done. We're gonna do the same for the other side. And the biggest problem you find, if you, if you over tighten your belts, pressure differential will be so much that it'll actually kick your, your X axis out of square. Uh, so you wanna keep even pressure and, and you know, don't go too crazy. All right, so your new linear rails are installed, the new gantry is installed, the new X carriage is installed. All you gotta do is wire up your electronics and, uh, and, and let her rip. Uh, the thing that I'll point out is that the motors will use the same gearing because we're using the same uh, cable pulleys. However, since they are upside down, you may need to reverse the direction of these motors from the base tronxy. And you can do that either by flipping the cable uh, or by setting it in firmware. Uh, now I've been able to get speeds, like I said, up to 140, 150 millimeters per second at 3000 acceleration. Uh, other printers using this exact same gantry. So identical in, in you know, every way, shape or form uh, have been able to go higher than that using upgraded GT2 cables. So if you're, if you're a speed seeker, uh, maybe check out Check out the, the Bowden carriage uh, and then also check out some upgraded cables uh, and then uh, you can really get this thing ripping. 
Now, if you like this gantry, stay tuned for additional information on uh, a broader printer kit that contains things like Z motor mounts, electronics boxes, uh, everything that you would need to build a, a, a Core XY printer from scratch. Um, I'm going to release that as a total conversion for the FT5 in a future video coming up real soon, uh, which basically guts the entire printer, leaving only the frame itself. So it's roughly equivalent to building a printer from scratch. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, if you loved it, uh, go ahead and subscribe. If you've got any questions, leave them below, uh, and I will see you in the next one.